Uh, greetings and welcome to the weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility where we treat people we do not treat diagnoses. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist. And today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... My name is Stephanie. I'm a physician assistant student from the University of Mount Union. And? Hi, I'm Stacy. I'm a physician assistant student from Duquesne University. So what we do here at Seclair, we assist people there who allow us to help them help themselves and quite often what we do uh, you can call it a treatment plan or you can call it a design for a living can you not right sure so some people have just lost their way a bit mm -hmm. is that correct Stephanie yep so we can't make a new path for them however we can let them become a little bit adventurous in their life we can offer certain enhancements to theirs so what we often do is we often say that it's very difficult to think your way into other behaviors, right? right? So we act our way into that, do we not? So the last three uh, podcasts here have dealt with 12-step uh, recovery. We went over the first three steps, which are the commitment steps. We went over steps four through nine, which are the action steps where you actually have to do something. We did step 10, which is the first of the maintenance steps. And today, Miss Stacy, we are going to discuss step 11 step 12. We're going to end it, which will be designed for a living. Uh, and as a disclaimer, I do not represent any 12-step group, nor speak for any 12-step group. The words mean something? Yes. Tell me about that. Words mean a lot of things. Sometimes they're more hurtful than people's actions. So. Oh, you bet. Have you ever heard the one sticks and stones may break my bones, words will never hurt me? I have, yeah. And of course, that's utter nonsense. Correct. You're a physician assistant in training, is that mm -hmm. correct? So you're going to be treating wounds. You're, mm -hmm. going to be, you're going to be you're going to be healing broken bones, is that right? Right. But you know the tongue is the only is the only organ that's strong enough to break a heart, Stacy. Did you know that? I can I can relate to that. Yes. Words words are forever. Mm -hmm. So quite often people for, can forgive, but however, it's very difficult to forget, is it not? Yes. You sure. So when we've gone through this design for living, it's about having a change in your thoughts and about having a change in your actions. It's about behavioral change, both thought and action, right? Mm -hmm. So having gone through this, we, we go to step 11, which is where we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understand him, praying only for knowledge, his will, and the power to carry that out, okay? So here at Seclair, what have you learned a little bit about mindfulness and about meditation, Stacy? Um, that it's better to take a step back and look at the whole picture before going ahead and reacting to a situation. So what you're talking about is learning how to respond rather than react. Right. And as you know, Stephanie, quite often what we do here is uh, one of the facets in the holistic part of the circle is a is a type of a faith-based type of mm -hmm. faith base, whatever, whatever that may be, whatever your leanings may be. So at times uh, you've had the opportunity to, uh, we have the privilege uh, of going down to uh, a religious community mm -hmm. down in uh, Greensburg, do we not? Yes. Where there's retired uh, retired sisters who have lived a lifetime of devoted service. Mm -hmm. right? So when we think about prayer, what, what would a prayer mean be to you? Well, prayer means to me just asking um, whatever you believe in, God or the higher power, for things that are out of your control or that you may need help with in your life. You bet. You bet. And is prayer like talking to a friend? Yeah. Absolutely. Prayer would be like talking to a friend. So prayer, prayer can be like recharging a battery. So imagine if you have a hundred devoted individuals there who's praying. Imagine how. Imagine what a potent charge that battery has. What a potent charge that battery has. So, and, and as, we under, as we understand the creator, the divine, whatever you may be, so there is, there is no one who can tell you exactly what that may be. Although, in your life, maybe that's, you've had individuals who've tried to do that. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And then, to, have you talked to them, ran into folks like that, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Well, sure, well, sure. So, what we do, we ask for, we ask for knowledge. Knowledge is power, is it not? Mm -hmm. Sure. And then there's action and effort to carry that out. When we talk about carrying out, that implies action, does it not? Mm -hmm. Right. And when we ask about, we ask about power to do as well, we ask about the ability to break out, the ability to break out of that depression, to break out of that anxiety, to, to move ahead, to actually take steps forward, mm -hmm. is it not? Are you a procrastinator? I can be at you, times. You can be, Miss Stacy. 
Definitely. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So sometimes we take procrastination to a new level, right? Mm -hmm. we, we set the bar a bit. So what we're asking to do is to, and at the end of this podcast, we'll, where the mindfulness comes in, it's what talks about paying attention on purpose. And we talk about moving moving forward, living, living a life of awareness. Okay, and also not judgmentally. And when we judge things, uh, Stephanie, doesn't that mean that we approach things with fear? Yes. Absolutely. So when we judge something, there's there's a tinge of fear. Is that is okay. it not? Is it not for sure? So at the last of the steps is having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps. So step twelve, having a result of these steps. So if we're saying that. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, what would that tell you about working the steps? What would that tell you about the purpose of them? The purpose is, I would think, to truly have an understanding and admit to yourself and totally live the life that there is something higher than you and that you can mm -hmm. get help with it. To have a spiritual awakening, a spiritual awakening. We talked about the Wizard of Oz, have we not? Yes. And in the beginning of that picture, Dorothy is living in a world of... Black and white. Black and white. And sometimes that's the way we live our lives, don't we, not, Ms. Yeah. Stacey? We live our, our world in black and white. We become human human doings rather than human beings. So when Dorothy landed in Oz and opened the door to the house, what, what was everything? Everything was in color. Everything was in color. So that's what we try to do. We try to help people to live their life in color, to experience life intensely, mm -hmm. to live to live in every moment. So... Having had a spiritual awakening as all of these steps, we tried to carry this message to others. And isn't that our responsibility? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a, there's a bit of an oxymoron in 12-step recovery that to keep it, you have to give it away. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So if there, was a, if there was a huge plague in your village, okay, and you had the cure, you had the cure. However, you kept it in the basement and you kept it locked away only for you. What type of a person would you be? A selfish person and not very giving. A selfish and self-centered person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So in carrying the message, we try to, to help those in, who, who still suffer, right? Right. Okay. okay. And, to, and to continue and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Practice these principles in all our affairs. So what do we try to do, Stephanie? We try to model behavior, do we not? Mm -hmm. Do we not? We may be the only type of lifestyle that, that people see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the idea is is to walk through your life with this with a design for living and follow that and be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. And I'm sure that you all heard uh, in Hamlet's where Polonius gives the diatribe to his son Laertes. Uh, do that in self be true? You heard that? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, and Socrates popped that out too. So uh, the idea is I would like everyone out there to find their way whatever that may be, to have a design for a living and actually and actually practice it. And uh, Ma, we're going to close out. Now we're going to share with everyone how to contact us. All questions, comments, and criticisms are welcome. To continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter under Seclair Life. You can also find this and other Grand Rounds on YouTube.com slash Seclair Video and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit www.seclair.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. And as always, we give a free prescription, do we not? Yes, we do. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we fish, fish, fish without bait. bait, absolutely, living a life without expectations. So your homework for this week is to be good to yourself, and the next time you're in an elevator, I'd like you to smile and say hello to a stranger and make them a friend. Until next time, namaste. Namaste.